I'm Janine Aloisi. Welcome to Turkish Cuisine. It's interesting to know that Turkey is officially classed as being on two continents, both Europe and Asia. So one can only imagine all the influences to the Turkish cuisine. And homestyle Turkish cooking embodies these influences. Our expert Jennifer is going to show you some techniques in order to master homestyle Turkish cooking in your home. Merhaba! That means hello in Turkish and welcome to our kitchen. What's the first thing you think of when you hear Turkey? The beauty? The culture? The first thing I think of is the food and how mouth-watering it is with every bite. Now we know Turkey is very popular for its meat dishes, but it's also known for its abundance of fresh fish. And that's what we're going to make today. What we're going to make is called the chupra. This is a great flaky white fish and we're going to clean it and season it and get it ready for frying. Now along with our fish, we're going to make piyaz, which is a bean side dish, and we're going to make roka salatasa, which is a great arugula salad. So let's get ready to season our fish. To season our fish, we're going to need coriander seed and salt. That's it, very simple. And for the coating for frying, you'll need one cup of flour, a quarter cup of cornmeal, and a cup of sunflower oil for frying. Now we're going to season our fish and let all the salt soak up. So we're gonna need coriander seed and salt. That's it, but don't get nervous to use your hands and rub it all in there. So I'm gonna use my hands and start rubbing. Now if you didn't wanna use your hands, this is a great time to use some gloves. I don't mind it. This is how my mom did it. That's how I learned how to do it. And some salt. Now let that salt really get inside. Open it. Don't be afraid to use salt. Of course, too much salt is not good. Just use your judgment and just rub it in there. Now, if your kids are reluctant to eat a fish that's whole, you can go to your local fish market and ask them to fillet it, get tilapia or flounder is a great fish. And frying of the fish is great because fish cooks up so fast that it doesn't soak up that much oil. Now make sure you get the coriander seed and the salt in and around on both sides of the fish because it's very important to season it but not overspice it. Because the best thing about Turkish cuisine is that you taste the simplicity of its food. You want to taste the item, not the seasoning or the spiciness around it. Now we're gonna get ready to put our chupra in the refrigerator and let it soak up all that salt and seasoning for about a half an hour. Now when we come back, we're gonna get ready to make our delicious piyaz side dish, which is the perfect complement for our fish meal. Don't go away. So many different dishes that I tried in Turkey and I would still like to try that I didn't get a chance to try. Um, there's so many fresh um, fruits and vegetables that um, are prepared in very unique ways um, in Turkey. I like jajuk a lot. It's with the yogurt and cucumbers. Put a little salt in there. It's really good. Imam Bayaldi was the one that comes to mind. It's like somebody said, it's like the Imam fainted and, and we always thought it was like, it was so good. The MN faith is so every time we take a bite, we go like this. The food in Turkey is just spectacular. And welcome back to our kitchen. If you've just joined us now, we're preparing the chupra, which is a delicious white flaky fish. We've seasoned it and I put it in the fridge and we're letting it chill to soak up all that delicious seasoning. Now we're going to make a side dish called piyaz, which is a bean side dish with a delicious lemon dressing. What we're going to need for this is one skinny green pepper, two scallions, a quarter of a bunch of parsley, half of a red onion, or you could use white, doesn't matter, two cups of beans. Uh, these have been soaked overnight and cooked for 40 minutes, but if you're pressed for time, you could use the can, that's fine. For our dressing, we're going to use one squeezed lemon, extra virgin olive oil, and a splash of red vinegar, and of course, salt and pepper to taste. So let's start chopping our ingredients. For this, I like to use a skinny green pepper. This gives it a great spice. 
Now, if you don't like spicy, you can omit this. The great thing about piaz is that you can make it your own. Spicy is the way my husband likes it. And of course, everything I've learned is from my mom, so this is what we're used to. But if you didn't want the spicy pepper, you could use the sweet pepper, or you could omit the pepper entirely. That's up to you. Now you can leave the seeds in there because the seeds is what makes it spicy. And if you really like it spicy, you can get those little jalapeno peppers. But remember, when you cut those, you should use gloves because you don't want to cut them and then God forbid touch your eye and then that's a big mess. So now we're going to chop our parsley just a little bit. You could roll it up like this. This is the way I like to do it. Roll it up as tight as you can and just give it a nice, fine chop. Put it on top of each other and chop again. Just a little parsley to garnish. It's really delicious. Now the best thing about this is that you could diversify. Just make it your own, whatever you want. You could put scallions, you could omit the other onions and leave the scallions. Any way you do it, it's a great complement to our fish dish. And that's the best thing about Turkish cuisine. Everything needs to complement each other, to bring out the flavor in each other. That's the beauty in its simplicity. And that's what we're trying to accomplish here today. So we've got our scallions. I mean, who doesn't love scallions? Let's chop. Okay. Now we're gonna cut our red onion. Only half is necessary for this. I've put it in water because I've learned a little trick that if you soak it in cold water, you're less likely to cry when you're chopping. And that always happens to me. No matter how many times I've chopped onions, it still happens, but you can get a nice thin slice, just like this. And the onions bring out a great flavor in the beans. And just like that with your hands. Now we're gonna put in our beans. I've used different color beans, but you can use different types. You could use fava beans, lima beans, cannelli beans. This is the one that's most popular in the restaurants that you go to. They're called kidney beans. I use two different colors just to make it look a little more presentable. If you do all white, that's fine. Let's start making our dressing. Um, this is the way I do it. I use red vinegar. Not everybody uses it. I think it's perfect. We use one lemon, already squeezed. And I like to pour it in a bowl because this way, after it's done and I pour it all over the beans, it gets all over really nice and you don't miss any spots. So that's the way I like to do it. You take extra virgin olive oil because that brings out the flavor. And just really use your eye. About two tablespoons is perfect for one lemon, but you could taste. I mean, that's what you do when you cook. You taste, you dabble a little bit. Don't forget the salt. A little bit of salt. And of course, just a splash of the red vinegar. Now, not everybody uses the red vinegar. Like I said, this is what I've learned from my mother. And this is the way that works best. And you mix it in the bowl. And now when I pour it over my beans, everywhere gets the same mixture. And we'll just mix that up. Mmm, look at the difference of colors and the variation of the beans. This is why I like to use the different colors, because you get the red and the white, and you got the green and the red onions. And if you had white onions, that's fine, but it's just so much prettier that way. Doesn't that look so appetizing? And this is the best side dish to complement our fish, in my opinion. And now I'm gonna get our serving platter, which is here. We're gonna pour our mixture very neatly, and we're gonna garnish it. Now there are many things you can use to garnish this dish. Olives, radishes. What we're gonna use today is tomato and lemon wedges. It's great because you get to utilize things that are in every Turkish home. And it makes it look very presentable. So I'll take and cut it, slice it down just like so, and in wedges. They don't have to be too thick, just a little bit. And you could put one on the side, use your imagination, in the middle, get some lemon wedges. You could even squeeze a little like that and put it just like so. And there you go, we have our delicious Pia's side dish. When we come back, I have a really sweet surprise in store for you. See you soon. The 
Restaurant Lodos is located in New Milford, New Jersey. It's known for its great kebabs, fresh fish, and Mediterranean salads. Coupled with a colorful interior design, it's hard to resist. My name is Bahri Karaslan. Uh, I'm the chef and the owner of the Lodos Turkish and Mediterranean restaurant. We have been running this restaurant one, more than 20 half years. We are serving uh, Turkish and Mediterranean food. In our menu, we do have a variety of kebabs. Also, we do have uh, Mediterranean fish, such as branzini, porata. Also, we, we do have the Turkish traditional dishes, such as Sultan's Delight. Also, really famous, our salads, Turkish chop salad. My name is Sevda Keller. I'm the manager owner of the Lodos restaurant. And I have been in restaurant business since I was a child because my family had a restaurant before in Turkey. And I have been working for a long time. I know a lot about Turkish food, and uh, my favorite is mante. And what did you have today? I had kifta. It was delicious, fabulous. This is a great restaurant. We come here all the time because the kids like it also. It's good. What's the best part? What's the best part, Ty? That's just good food. <laughs> Our customers, most of them are like American, almost 95%. Because they like to try Turkish food and they like to have like new experience and they love Turkish food. When they come, they were a little like afraid, but then when after they tried the food, they love it. And they always come back. <laughs> Um, I'd say shish kebab with yogurt sauce. Yes, is that what you had today? Yes, yes, I did. How was it? Good. It's good. I came here a couple of times. I, I really like it. It's good cuisine. I like almost everything. I'm Turkish, so <laughs> I'm used to it. I had mixed grill today. It was fine. We've been here a few times. And it's fun for kids and it's good food, food that I'm used to. And also we have a bunch of appetizers. They are all like freshly made and we have like kebabs and we have Turkish traditional dishes like hünkar bendi, stuffed cabbage rolls and we have fresh fish selection on our menu every day. I'm inviting to everyone to taste the Turkish food. I believe they won't be disappointed. And now it's time for our delicious arugula salad, which is the perfect complement for our fish dish today. What we'll need is some fresh arugula washed and dried, fresh tomatoes, lemon, extra virgin olive oil, and salt. Let's start by taking the arugula, which is very healthy, rich in iron. Now with the arugula, really simple. All you have to do is take it with your hand and break it. That's the way we like to do it at home. Just break it. It gives it a wonderful look. Now arugula, is great because it's rich in iron and minerals. And what we love in Turkey is use of the freshest produce. I'm gonna chop our tomatoes just like this. Big wedges is what we like because it makes it look very pretty and presentable, which is what we love. But if you didn't want to use the arugula, you can use curly lettuce, romaine lettuce, spinach is also a great way, any type of leafy lettuce. But the main important thing about this is the dressing. 
The dressing, we're going to take one lemon juice, mix it with our extra virgin olive oil and salt. The dressing is what brings out the flavor in the fish and complements all these dishes and bring it together and actually cuts a little bit of the taste of the fish. So you definitely need this dressing with anything over here and let's put some salt. And you know how I like to do it. I like to mix up my dressing beforehand. We'll pour it all over and that's it. That's, you can add a little onion to this if you want a little crispiness, but because we put onion in the piaz, we're not gonna do that here. Just a little mix. Once we have the mixture done, we'll get our serving plate right here, pour it in, and we'll garnish with a little bit of a lemon. Now lemon is a great way to garnish lots of different types of salads. Okay, we'll just get our fork. And I'm gonna show you a really great way to garnish with a lemon. Just take half your lemon like this, slice it down the middle, give it a little cut, and twist it. There you go, that's a great way to garnish. It works for many different dishes. Now when we come back, we're gonna get our fish out of the fridge and prepare it with our coating, getting ready to fry. And then I have a sweet surprise in store for you. So don't go away. Last week we showed you the mystical Black Sea region. It's protected by high mountains and it is abundant with hazelnuts, corn, and tea. This is the second part of that video. Formerly known as Trebizond, the modern city of Trabzon is the chief city and port on the eastern coast. Among its many Roman and Byzantine monuments is Hagia Sophia, a fine 13th century Byzantine church with beautiful mosaics and frescoes. The 19th century Atatürk Pavilion is a traditional Black Sea mansion once used by Turkey's founding president. South of Trabzon, in the mountains, is Altındere National Park, providing a magnificent setting for the 14th century Sumela Monastery, which clings to a rocky ledge 300 meters above a deep gorge. The elaborate complex contains churches, chapels, dormitories, refectories, and storerooms. Southeast of Trabzon, Uzungu, a lovely alpine lake surrounded by mountains and meadows, is excellent for camping, trekking, and fishing. Rize, east of Trabzon, is the center of the tea plantation region responsible for supplying Turkey's beloved national hot drink. East of Rize, high in the mountains at 1,355 meters, the spa village of Aydar is surrounded by spectacular alpine scenery. Its thermal waters are believed to have healing powers. Perched high on a promontory above the Choru River near the Georgian frontier, the provincial capital of Artvin enjoys a dramatic setting and a vibrant traditional culture. The Kachkar mountains around it are excellent for hiking and fast flowing streams like the Choru are favorites with whitewater rafting enthusiasts. Welcome back. If you remember, we seasoned them with coriander seed and salt, and we let them chill in the fridge for about a half an hour. Now we're going to coat them and get them ready for frying. So what I do is I take a clear bag. Now this is just one method. You could pat it in the coating if you want, but this is an easy way to do it so our hands don't get dirty. Quarter cup of cornmeal in the bag, and one cup of flour. And of course, this is according to your eye. If you have more fish, you could put more. If you see you need more, you could add. Just put the fish in the bag and start shaking it up. Now before I start shaking it up, I'm just gonna turn on our oven, and let the skillet get really nice and hot. 
Now in the bag, I'm getting my flour mixture and just shaking it all up. This is a great way so you don't get your fingers dirty. My mom likes to pat it in, taking turns, but I found that this is much faster and a great way to get the coating all the way around. So this is our coating, it's ready. Now I think our skillet is hot enough and we're just gonna pour our sunflower oil. I've used a cup, but of course, just use your eye. If it's too much, then let some of it sit, but if it's not enough, then you could add. And we're just gonna place our fish, just like that. Let it sizzle, just like that. You can even smell it, the aroma comes right away. Oh God, I can't wait to eat this fish. Now the reason I put a little cornmeal in here, not everybody does it, some people just use plain flour, but the cornmeal gives the coating a little crunch. And you see that sizzling. Now this takes very quick, it's very quick to fry it, like maybe three minutes on each side. Now you see how fast this is cooking? So just because it's fried doesn't mean it's that bad because it's so fast that it doesn't soak up that much oil. And the batter, it's only flour, so it's not like, it's not like you have that heavy batter with the egg. and so It's just flour and a little cornmeal, so it's very light and healthy. And it goes great with our pias, which is our bean side dish, and our arugula salad. So I think this is about golden brown, nice and golden brown on each side. And that's it, we'll just turn it off. And these are just about done. We're gonna bring it over here and place it on some paper towels to soak up that oil. So I like to put everything on a paper towel, especially after I fry it, because this way it allows the paper towel to soak up all that extra oil. It's just a little tip I use. I find it works well, especially with fries or anything I fry actually, but fish especially. So now I'm gonna get my serving platter and I'm gonna garnish it with some curly lettuce. Now I chose curly lettuce for this, but again, you could use anything. I just think curly lettuce is nice and pretty. And you wash and dry it, of course. Make sure your hands are clean. And just lay them out nicely and straight, as straight as you can. This is great when company's coming over. It makes a really nice presentation. We could take our fish our chupra, now you've learned a new Turkish word, and just lay them out on top. And also what I like to do is garnish with a little tomato. It's really simple, and a tomato is something you'll find in every Turkish home, even in the gardens. Lots of Turkish people love to do homemade gardening. You can get tomatoes and cucumbers. Just garnish, just like that. Okay. So now we have our delicious chupra. And when we come back, we're gonna start on that delicious surprise that I promised for you. So don't go away, and I'm gonna tell you what it is as soon as we come back. We'll get back to Jennifer's kitchen in a moment. Next, we'll meet Nicole, an American who fell in love with a Turkish man. We spoke with her about our romantic wedding in Turkey and our passions for Turkish food. Let's hear what she has to say. My name is Nicole Goksel. I'm originally from Long Island, New York. I've also lived in Madrid and in Boston. Um, I've come back to Manhattan. I've been here for about three years. And the first couple months being back, I met a wonderful guy who happens to be Turkish. And we ended up getting married. And we've been married for almost a year now. Uh, we were married in Istanbul, Turkey. Um, and we had a wonderful time. About 20 people from my family in America came to support me. And it was a big wedding with 200 people. And the deputy mayor came as well. Um, my mother-in-law and my sister-in-law, even though they've never had henna parties, it's like the new trend in Turkey. So they decided they were going to throw me a henna party. So my mother-in-law went to the bazaar and got like a henna outfit. And they dressed me up in this red outfit with a red hat and put the red veil on over my face. And my sister-in-law had all this wonderful food catered in that, you know, was obviously all Turkish food for my, you know, American 
family that came to visit. They put um, liras, like lira coins, on my hand, and then they put henna, and then they closed my hand, and then they wrapped it around in like a gold thing. And it was my mother-in-law, and it's supposed to um, provide prosperity and wealth and good luck for the new couple. Having lived in Madrid, Spain for about a year, um, I kind of knew, and also traveling to Germany and Mexico, I've, I've traveled around the world. So I wasn't, you know, with any of these huge ideas of Turkey, I was just very excited to see a new culture. When I arrived, um, it was similar to other European cultures. People are very warm, very welcoming, two kisses. The food is very fresh and people take pride in, you know, making food at home. So I, I liked it and it felt very comfortable to me. I make the Turkish food at home, but uh, actually my husband is the one that does all the cooking. My favorite thing, my favorite Turkish food is uh, gözleme. And I had gözleme for the first time during my honeymoon when I went down to the south part of Turkey in Kash. And I saw the women, you know, yeah, I don't know, kneading the dough or something. And, you know, it was just great. It was so fresh and it was so lovely. So I ate gözleme every day of my honeymoon. <laughs> and it's not very common in Istanbul. And I found one place in Manhattan that actually makes it. I like cigarette boy. I like patlajan salatase. I like doner kebab. And let's see, I love pilaf. And like beef stew, lamb, no, I'm sorry, lamb stew. Anything with lamb is really good. Um, the salad, just a normal Turkish salad. I think during our honeymoon, I got a really good taste of Turkey, you know, outside of Istanbul. Mm. Driving around the south of Turkey, paying an old man to use his boat and see the sunken city in the south and, you know, some old woman made me climb up some castle and, I mean, I don't know how she did it multiple times each day, but I was winded and I thought I was gonna, like, fall off the cliff. But, I mean, there's just so much, like, generosity of the people of Turkey and they make you feel so comfortable and they want to accommodate you and everything is so beautiful in Turkey. I love it. Chuk fandom. <laughs> um, it's great. It's okay this may sound a little crazy but I think Cheetos in Turkey taste better than Cheetos in America. For some reason it takes, tastes better, fresher, with less chemicals. Uh, food in Turkey is just spectacular. Um, my mother-in-law, she refuses to eat at restaurants. She cooks food at home. So my experience is home-cooked meals. Um, we cook home-cooked meals here in America that are Turkish as well. We make, you know, patlajan, salatase, and dolmas, and all that kind of stuff. So we really, I really enjoy Turkish food. And we eat it at least once a week. Welcome back, and now it's time for that sweet surprise that I've been promising you. We're going to make dessert, Revani. Revani is a famous dessert in Turkey, and it translates to semolina sponge cake. For our Revani, we will need one cup of flour, a cup and a half of semolina, one tablespoon baking powder, a little less of a tablespoon of vanilla, two tablespoons sugar, half a cup of vegetable oil, and three eggs. First, what we're gonna do is we're gonna sift our flour. I could just put it in here and sift it, just like so. And you see how thin, and bouncy, the flour is coming out. That's what you want. Because the flour ends up being like balls. 
We gotta take out those balls. You don't need to sift the semolina. And see this balls that are left? That you could just throw away. So we'll do that. Now this mixture is ready. We're gonna leave that over here. Now we're gonna take our eggs and separate them. This is really easy to do. Just crack it. Kind of open it. Go there. And just pour the yolk in there. We don't need the yolk. So after that, we're gonna beat in our sugar with our hand mixer and let it get nice, whipped, and fluffy. So we'll put in our sugar. Whip it with our hand mixer. Now we'll put it up on high. And we'll just whip it. Just whip it good, whip it. And then once that's whipped, we can add in our yolk and all the rest of our ingredients. So now we'll add in our egg yolk. And now I have a secret ingredient, one that I didn't mention before. A lot of Revani recipes don't have it, but I find that it's delicious. It's one cup of creamy yogurt. That's my mother's secret ingredient. And now I'm sharing with all of you, so we'll pour that in. Plain creamy yogurt. Don't tell anybody. Now we'll add in our oil and leave a little bit because we're going to have to put it on the bottom of the pan. Vanilla, remember, a little less than a tablespoon because you don't want it to be uh, too bitter. And baking powder because we're baking a cake. And then once this is good, let's get it up there really nice and whipped. We're going to pour in our mixture. You just have to mix it, and then we're gonna bake it. We're gonna bake it for about 30 to 40 minutes. Now, all ovens are different, so please, please know your oven when you're deciding how you're gonna bake it. If your oven is one of those old gas ovens and you know it gets hot really fast, maybe you wanna put a little aluminum foil on top, otherwise it'll just burn, so you don't want that. So, slow, nice cook, and in between you could take a spatula and just take in the sides you know, like you're baking any type of cake. And that's really it. Once this mixture is nice and done, and like I said, there's so many different variations of this dish. This is just how I learned from my mom. So now we're done with that. Let's take out our baking dish, which I have right here. And we're gonna pour some oil at the bottom so it doesn't stick. So just pour a little bit of vegetable oil. Get it around. Now you could use, um, they have for bakers, you know, the spray that you can use. If you don't have, you can improvise. I use this, it works just fine. Just get it all the way around while our oven is preheating. Now it's preheating at 300 degrees, but remember, if you have that hot stove, start it off at 200. Start off at 200, wait about 10 minutes, see how it's cooking. If you see it's getting hot too fast, lower that oven, put a little aluminum foil on it, and then bake it because you want a nice golden brown color. And then you could garnish it with either some coconut or what we have today is some walnuts because I, I personally, I love walnuts. So that's how we're gonna do it. But coconut is great. And even if you have a little bit of mint, that's always great. So now our Revani is ready. So I'm gonna put it in our oven and get ready to start making our syrup. Now while we're waiting for our Revani to cook, we're gonna make the syrup. It's really simple and delicious. All you need is three cups of sugar, three cups of water, and two tablespoons of lemon juice. So let's light up our fire. Get our wooden spoon. Now this syrup is used for many of the desserts in Turkish cuisine. It's just sugar, water, and a little bit of lemon juice. Now some people use lemon zest. Personally, I like the lemon juice better. And the lemon juice is necessary because putting the lemon juice in will keep your sugar syrup from forming that very sticky, honey-like texture. So two tablespoons is all you need. Put it in there, and now we're just gonna wait for that to boil. 
We're gonna let it boil, and then once it gets to a nice boil, we're gonna lower it and let it simmer for about 10 to 15 minutes. So our syrup has been simmering for about 10 minutes. It's just about done, so I'm gonna turn it off and let it relax, if you will. And let's check in our Ravani, which has been cooking for about 35 to 40 minutes. It's a nice golden brown color, and the smell is coming through just perfect. Uh, let's take it out, and be careful because it's very hot. Let's take it out, and look at that. This is exactly the color you want it to be. Homemade semolina sponge cake. I could smell the sweet smelling aroma. I can't wait to eat it. Now we're gonna get our syrup and pour it over the cake. Okay. Now you wanna pour the mixture over when both are hot. This way the sponge cake can soak up all the syrup. And just take it and pour it over like so. That's all right if you spill. Now this syrup is used for a lot of the dishes in Turkey. You could use it for baklava or sheker pade, tulumba tatlısı. This is mostly the one that they use with a little different variation every now and again. Some people put the lemon zest, some people put the little orange zest. I just put a little lemon juice. And then once we're done, we're gonna let it sit for about 10 minutes, really let it soak, and we'll cut it and we'll garnish it, and we'll prepare it and get it ready to eat. So we waited about 10 minutes for the cake to soak up all of the syrup. Now make sure you wait a little bit because you don't want to see any syrup laying on the top. You want it really to soak up all in there. And now we're just going to cut it. Now I'm going to cut it in half because we've made this pretty thick. But you could cut it in rows of three. It doesn't really matter. But it's pretty thick. And once I take it out, you're going to see what I'm talking about. So we can take one piece out. Put it on our plate, and now we'll garnish it with a little bit of walnut, which you can use coconut or a little bit of a mint, uh, you know, the leafy kind that makes it look really pretty. And just put some walnuts. So here you have the famous Revani. It's very famous all throughout Turkey. Many poets like to use it because it rhymes with many words, and it's very delicious. I can't wait to eat it. So I'm going to get my fork. And I'm going to start eating because this is the best part. Mmm. That's good. That's very good. I'm just going to finish eating this. Don't mind me. So now we've come to the end of another delicious meal. We've made the chupra, the piaz, or bean side dish, the roca salatasa, or arugula salad, and the delicious revani. But there's so much more to Turkish cuisine. There's so many delicious things to try, and I feel happy to share it with my family and you. Join us here again next week, and we'll find something else to cook together. Thanks for watching. I'm Janine Aloisi, and I'll see you next time to explore more Turkish cuisine. Till then, have a great week.